Okay, great. Yeah. So right now, there are over 10,000 students in Minnesota are learning Chinese. And on every Saturday, there are hundreds of Chinese kids and American kids to learn Chinese, math, and uh, you know, arts at those weekend schools. And, this, and these efforts has created those centers for us to pass, in, um, to, to pass on our culture and the traditions to the younger generation. And in the Twin Cities areas, we have a variety of cultural and arts groups, and their performance have really enriched, uh, the, I mean, the bigger community of Minnesota. And they perform at different cultural events, choir, dancing group, and kids' activities. Since the majority of, of the first generation immigrants are working professionals, and they've self-organized a lot of professional associations and groups to share knowledge, to discuss how to improve you know, career development, and also to, con to, to keep the continuous learning. And within our community, and there are also a lot of efforts um, on community service and charity work. And we have Association of the Minnesota Chinese Physicians, to provide volunteer and free clinic to the members in our community without medical insurance. And we also have Chinese social service to offer regular assistance and support for the seasons members in, uh, for the senior members in our community. And especially since the last presidential election, through really a strong initiative to become a more engaging and involved in politics. So the photo showed in the last presidential election, a group of Chinese American raised $4,000 within 24 hours to fly the banner at Minnesota Chinese American for Trump in the sky for two days. And right now in this election season, and different community members volunteer to walk in the parades with their supported candidates. Um, so this is a parade in Edina, parade in Chanhassen. And also this is the most recent parade in Cheska and supporting GOP candidate Doug Warlow for Attorney General in the state. And besides those volunteer work, there has been a strong enthusiasm initiative in our community to support our representatives. So there are continuous efforts for fundraising in the community. So the community raised over $10,000 within a week for GOP candidate for Senate, U.S. Senate, Mr. Jim Neuberger, and also we contributed over two thousand dollars, you know, within a few days for the GOP candidate, uh, Mr. Doug Warlow, for the state attorney uh, general. And there are a lot of uh, initiatives to support the local legislatives uh, in Minnesota. And as a minority community, we do have our concerns. And our primary concern currently is the ethnic data disaggregation law in Minnesota, which was you know, signed into law in the year of 2000, 2017. You know, very unfortunately, without any input, involvement from the Chinese American community and many other minority groups, and this law, you know, this and this ethnic data desegregation has become the Minnesota law. Basically, this law will require every public school district in Minnesota to collect as detailed ethnic data from minority students only. The Chinese American community, after we really learned about this, has really become a law, and it is a discriminatory law we really start to voice our concerns to the legislators, to the government offices, 
and we explain why we're so concerned. You know, because, you know, it's wrong. There are several re major reasons. The very first, this law will create more division and creations and the discriminations against the minority students in Minnesota. And also, it will bring more risks of racial and ethnic-based discrimination and harassment into Minnesota schools. And without the good measure and investment to make sure the storage of the data is secure, it will just uh, expose children to more uh, privacy risks and, uh, and the data issue because of those collected sensitive information. And the last but not the least, this law will waste millions of dollars of the taxpayers' money without really achieving the goal to help the students who are struggling academically. So since the last summer, our community has really become engaging and active to voice all its concerns and the protest against this, this new law in Minnesota. So back in April this year, on April 12th, we organized, we self-organized a 300 people peaceful rally in front of the state capital to voice our concerns, to call for stopping of this discriminatory law. So these are the photos taken from that rally. We're really calling for uniting us, not dividing us. And we also held and reach out, you know, reach out to the Minnesota Department of the Meeting and had many meetings with the Minnesota Department of Education who is in charge of implementing this law. Let them know our concerns. Let them know they, if there's anything they could do better, you know, we hope they could improve the process of this uh, implementation. And we met with we, we met with the commissioner of the Minnesota Department of Education, the assistant commissioner, and we participate every community feedback meeting hosted by the Minnesota Department of Education regarding this uh, uh, this ethnic data collection. So this photo shows the, the most recent and also the last community feedback meeting held by the Department of Education. We also have many meetings with the Council on Asian and Pacific Minnesotans, who is a strong advocate for this discriminatory law. Uh, we made our efforts to let the leaders and also the board be aware of our community's concern and let them know that it is not right to ignore the concerns from our community. Also, community volunteer members reached out and had meetings with the school district superintendents uh, in Minnetonka School District and also in the Eden Prairie School District. And we've learned the lessons from missing being excluded from the legislative process of a very important law. So we were started our interest and actions to work and meet with our legislators to let them be aware of our concerns and to seek any possibility to amend and also repeal this discriminatory law. So these photos are taken from uh, many meetings from the community uh, from the, uh, that the community volunteers to meet with uh, our legislators. Um, so you can see there are big crowds showing up. So in general, believing Minnesota is our home with hard-working ethics and a civic participation, we Chinese Americans want to contribute to a stronger and a fairer state for the better future of every kid uh, in Minnesota. And we hope that every political leader, they will make laws and policies that will unite us, that will divide us to create an environment and growing experience for every kid 
you know, has grown up as a citizen to believe in this country, in every corner, everyone is equal between opportunities and laws. Hopefully this is a brief introduction and presentation just to give you a quick glimpse of who we are and what we are care about and what we are fighting for. Okay. And by working with